we start with Tyler Shelvin. Uh, we we alluded to the possibility of this yesterday and the the possibility that he could opt out of this season. Shelvin's case is a little bit different than that uh, of Jamar Chase. Chase is an absolute bona fide lock first round top 10 right. pick and very good chance he'll go in the top five. Shelvin is a potential first round pick. If he had gone out last year, I think he probably would have been in the latter portion of the first round. He is a run stuffing, just a, a big, huge man that will disrupt your interior running lanes. He is a prototypical uh, NFL nose tackle, three technique, whatever you want. Yeah, to I think he can play. He either, can play by either. the way. Uh, if he plays at 345 pounds. Those that are not familiar with Shelvin's story, and I think most of you probably are, he was a very, very highly recruited player. And when he got here, got off to a extremely lackluster start to his career, mostly because he was not in shape. And just about the point uh, in the 2018 season where it looked like he was going to be a bust, he turned it around, he got himself in good shape, had a strong finish to 18, and had a huge 2019 season. Now... Fast forward to this spring when it looked like Shelvin was setting himself up for a, a strong final campaign and put himself in position where guys like Todd McShay and others have him in anywhere from 17 to 25, some, somewhere in that area of the first round. But uh, when the shutdown hit and Shelvin, like the rest of the team, left campus when he returned, uh, according to Ed Ogeron, he was extremely overweight. This right. is easy to believe because this has happened to him before, and he's a very big man. It's Difficult if you're not in a structured environment to control uh, his weight. Ogeron told us he was up at 370 pounds, which we know he can't play at. So Shelvin's options became these. You can get down to whatever you can get down from 372 in the next four weeks. I don't know what that number is, but I got a hard time believing it's a peak physical condition, 345 pounds that he played at last year he can move 345 pounds he can't move 370 right i don't know what that number was but it was going to be likely above 345 it was in my opinion it was going to be hard for him to put good tape up early because it was going to take him some time to get into condition and that also increases the likelihood of an injury his other option is to opt out to get into a training facility right now and do nothing but train between now and the combine and show up at the combine in the best shape of his life. You told us yesterday the story about what happens in these uh, in these structured environments that are set up by agents during which time you are being paid or fronted money, if you prefer that term. And you said, hey, listen, you, you kind of put the, the numbers up. You get to this weight, you get to this body fat mass, you get to this is what your corresponding bonus is going to be. And if I'm Tyler Shelvin, the first thing I'm doing is taping up to the bathroom mirror 345 yeah. at 345 dash 15 million. OK, <laughs> I get to 345. Yeah. I get 15 million. I'm at 370. Am I don't I know what the that? number yeah. is, but it ain't 15 million. It's going to be considerably less than that. And he doesn't take the, the, the chance of injury. Um, I don't know how much COVID played a role in this. He is more susceptible because of his size uh, to potential heart problems that are possibly not even related to COVID. So yeah. this choice, uh, I understand. I said this yesterday. He uh, he, he's in a situation where he has a lot to gain by if dedicating himself. A lot, by by dedicating himself, yeah. He uh, he's, he's, got to, he's got to show up in peak physical condition. If he shows up at that combine at 365 pounds, it's going to cost him a tremendous amount of money. I agree with you. And so when we talked about this yesterday, we thought, okay, well, he's you know potentially not going to opt out because, yes, he is looked at as a first-rounder, but he could play his way into so much more. If he went out and had another dominant season and he was you know 340 between that and 350 pounds, he could be a guy that could work his way up into you know possibly the top 15 and not the top 25. And so we still thought he had you know things to gain if he came back and played in this college football season. The thing that kind of stings if you're an LSU fan is the timing of, of both of these opt-outs because mm -hmm. you thought you were moving forward with the best offensive player in football in Jamar Chase and one of the best defensive linemen that you had with Tyler Shelvin in the country. And so 
now you're wondering, okay, does LSU have the time to replace these guys? Well, look, you're not going to replace these first round guys, but you have candidates that can at these two positions. And this isn't pumping sunshine. This is, hey, you got to step up. So Terrace Marshall, right? Terrace Marshall is a guy that has number one stuff. Well, now Terrace knows he has to step up. You've got a lot of young defensive tackles. That, that was the position they recruited the most in last year's signing class. Well, hey, I'm sorry, you're freshmen, don't care. You've got to step up and you've got to make plays because we just lost two first-round picks off of our team a couple of weeks before the season. And again, the, the timing does stink for LSU. I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, I've, I've been asked a number of times, why why now? And again, uh, I'll, I'll say what I said yesterday. There are offers on the table now that simply weren't there two months ago, probably weren't there a month ago. And they're unique offers in that they're offers – that stretch from now what today is September the 1st through the end of April. Typically, these offers are only extended, and we're talking about agents. We're talking about the, the end of the season is in January, and then you're, you're floated for four months. Now you're floated for eight. And I don't, I don't think this is going to become the norm for very many kids to, to sit out an entire season. I think this is a unique season where – it's not going to be held against kids for opting out. I think in other years, it might be. It might hurt kids. Now, not the ones at the very top of the draft. Joey Bosa was able to, uh, I'm sorry, Nick Bosa, was able to, to sit out basically his entire senior year and didn't hurt him a bit. I don't think it would hurt Jamar Chase uh, a, a single bit. If Trevor Lawrence or Josh Fields, uh, Justin Fields went out, don't think it would hurt them yeah. a bit. Players that are further down the line, yeah, I think in a normal year it would. And I think in a normal year, Chase would have been on the field this week. Shelvin would have been on the field this week. Kerry Vincent would have been on the field this week. Neil Farrell would have been on the field this week. This ain't normal. Right. There's nothing normal about this. So, I think it was a very difficult decision, and we talked about it yesterday for Jamar Chase. That's why you see the timing. It was something where he struggled with it. He went back and forth because – I'm sure there was a lot of people handy saying, man, you, you know you don't have to play this year. You know that if you just sit out and stay healthy, you're going to be a multimillionaire. But this was a guy that when you saw the tapes at LSU release, when you went out and you saw their practices, not only in the summertime but in the springtime, this was a guy that was still grinding. He was still staying after and catching you know, 100 balls from the jugs machine. I mean, he was planning on playing. I think that he just continued to try to make it work and then after a while, it's like, man. The, don't you think the offers are new, though? Uh, relatively new. Don't you think that the, these offers now uh, to go and train? I think we have more information for, now. Yeah. Yes. Do you, I don't, see, I don't think that they've, had, they've been sitting on these offers since June. I could be wrong. But I, I think that these offers are relatively new, that the, the landscape has come together now in the last several weeks. They know what they're dealing with. They know what the schedules are. They know what – they have more testing numbers and things like that, and they know sort of where they, they've been to NFL training camps now. They know what the value of these kids is without having a final season. I, I think that information is somewhat new. Not that, not that we didn't know Jamar Chase was a, a, a top pick back in January, but I think they've got more information on more kids and they were ready to make these moves now, and they can do it. Without NFL te- you know, going to NFL teams and saying, hey, man, if, if Chase were to sit out the season, would you hold it against him? And I think the answer yeah. was not a bit. Right. Okay. And I think probably when they, the, they asked that question about Shelvin, would you, hold, would you hold it against him? Well, depends on what he shows up at. So, that, if, he, if he shows yeah. up at 345 pounds and just says, let my 2019 film stand, he's going to be fine. So for me, and we talked about this yesterday, anytime you take an extended period of time off from actual padded practice, going against you know the other yeah. guys, not just working out at a beach somewhere, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take a little bit yes. to get back into the motion of things and be at your peak performance. I don't really worry about that with Jamar Chase. All right, Jamar yeah. Chase, give, give him a month, and he'll, yeah. be, he'll be ready to go. Yeah. Tyler Shelvin, mm-hmm. without playing football? 20 months. For over a year and a half? 20 months. Months is what we're talking about from game to game. Now, not game to practice, but game to game. That that would worry me. It would. Mm-hmm. That would worry me and because of the weight issues and just because of the, uh, the sheer size of him. 
anytime in the NFL when a, when a defensive tackle like that would get hurt, man, the coaches would worry. God, yeah. Is he going to be able to rehab and stay in shape and not lose himself and still have the same power that he had? And not playing football for that long – would worry me at that position with Tyler Shelvin. I think that's going to be a serious question. He is going to have to work his ass off to it's make sure him. that he stays right. in shape and that he can prove to these teams that he's ready to go once the OTAs and the minicamp start after next year's NFL draft. There's no question that this is a riskier move than it is for Chase. Chase was a Chase was a relatively easy decision for Shelvin. He's he's betting on himself that he can put himself into a situation where he's got peak physical condition when it matters the most. Uh, so it's a, if he shows up at the combine at 365 pounds, he's got nobody to blame but himself. And it, 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 w- it will cost him Im- immeasurably. You remember when Trey Turner was here? Yep. What did Trey Turner play at LSU? About 335 pounds-ish, something like that. You remember when he showed up to the combine? Showed up at 308 and everybody went, <gasps> wow, look at that. Yeah. That's what Tyler Shelvin needs. Now, he's not 308 pounds, but he needs to show up at right. somewhere somewhere in the 340s is what I would say is I, realistic. And I agree with you. I think that would go a long way, but I still would have my concerns. Even if he's 340, even if he, he changes his body, I would still have concerns that he has not gone against a center guard double team in and, 20 months. That, and I, would, and that I would make me worse. I wouldn't argue against that point at all. This is Ed Ogeron off the bench uh, talking about the departures. You know, those things are going to happen. That's, that's the time we're living in, and uh, we wish Jamar and Tyler the, the best. Uh, they helped us win a national championship. They're two great young men from great families. We recruited both of them. We wish them the best, but you know what? We don't blink. Next man up. 